Hello, everybody. Back again. Um, I guess I'm going to chuck these reviews out today. Um, after I said I was in HD earlier in the first video today. Turns out, I don't know what happened to it. It's better quality than it was before. I think I just got to work out the kinks in my uh, camera and my computer working together and whatnot. But nonetheless, it's still, I think personally it's still better quality than it was. Uh, so, kind of was wrong and... I know what you guys it's not HD, it's not HD, but it's close enough. It's better for me. Um, anyways, besides that, we looked at the smoke just a little bit ago, the Magneto. To now we're going to look at the, uh, what I got sitting on top of this guy. It is the Igo L. It's been out for quite some time. I'm going to be showing you this guy here, the Igo L. Um, and, uh... I'm going to show you some different wicking options or different ways to coil this guy up. So some interesting stuff show you the way I'm going to be doing mine. We'll stay tuned, we'll set it down, and uh, we'll get right into it. Okay, so, um, up be closey time, as Gordon Green would say. This is going to be my first... and. Maybe last time rebuilding on camera, depending on how this goes. So, excuse me if I'm off camera, on camera, you don't want me on camera, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but, um, I'm going to try to show you how I rebuild this guy and just show you what the Igolol is. Many of you may already know what it is. It's stainless steel, it's a dripping rebuildable atomizer, an RDA as called by m most people. It's got a 1 mil air hole, one bought. Oh, this one came from Fast Tech, uh, which many of you know is a cheap Hong Kong shipper from. I paid, I think, 7 bucks for this guy. Ow. I had one major issue with this, and that was. Let's see if we could show you here the air hole. It, it, right now, I have it drilled out to 1.8 mil ish close to a two mil air hole the problem I had with mine was the air hole was too low it was sitting almost at the lip of the deck on the inside so actually half the air hole is blocked by that little lip on the inside you're not gonna be able to see it from here or you kinda see a little bit of where that deck is just going right over that hole so it's closing my airflow halfway basically that's the issue I had fast tech because I don't know if they drill them or they get them pre-drilled I'm not sure so it might not even be their issue, but what I did was I drilled it out, and when I use it, I, I'm going to get it on a mechanical here so I can pop it off, because the O-rings are snug. I saw Phil's review on this a while back, and he said the O-rings were very loose, and that's not the case with this guy. Let's get it on something to pull it off. And what I've been doing, let me see if I can get this a better angle here. Okay. Now what I've been doing is basically be sitting my cap not all the way down just barely all the way down so I can get full airflow and that seems to solve the problem it may look a little wonky nothing leaks this way but it just you see half an o-ring so that's that but let's pop this top cap off anyway so I'm going to show you the innards of this guy and something's going on, on my computer here there we go the innards of this guy going to be a juicy, juicy, juicy bus. Okay. That's a rag. Alright. This is the innards of the Igo L. Two posts. You wrap your coil around there. Um, the Phillips heads. I got a little precision screwdriver set that works perfectly fine on this. And you're just able to get your screws out. Now, I still hate this camera, but you can see my little coil. It's a four wrap with 28 gauge canthal, and I'm using cotton wick. I'll show you what I'm using actually. It's this stuff here. I saw it on Grim, Grim, ah, Grim Green's video Sugar and Cream, 100% organic cotton. $1.99. I paid for it at Michael's. Um, it's like a hobby store or whatnot. Paid one ninety nine for it, um, and you get I think it's a hundred and 
20 yards. This will last you forever. You can really get an idea how big this is. It's huge. So I'm going to be rebuilding this with some cotton. And I'll tell you right now, I've used it with cotton and regular canthal wire. It works perfectly fine. Just do not dry burn it. Do not. You will obviously burn your, uh, your cotton. I'm just going to cut off a piece here of this cotton. I'm going to go rather long since I have so much of it. I'm going to safe side. Alright, that's a good piece. So I got all the tools I need out here. And I'm going to try something different. I just ordered some ribbon wire. I'm getting on the ribbon bandwagon now. And that's some clouds of vapor. It was 10 bucks for a spool. It's about 10 meters long. I don't know if that's... I know I can get a lot cheaper on eBay, but I don't want to order a whole roll. Because I just want to try it out and see what the deal is with it. I used it on a... Uh, what was it? A Genesis style atomizer. And it worked perfectly fine on there. So I'm going to see how it works on one of these guys with cotton. I'm going to find out. Cut some off using some toenail clippers here. Uh, that should be enough. There we go. Okay. So we got a generous portion of flat ribbon wire. I believe it's 0 .08 is the size, which is equivalent to 28 gauge canthal. So we're going to... This is going to be difficult. I guess everybody's right when it's difficult to build on camera, especially when you have horrible focus. And I mean horrible. Take this guy out here. Alright. Let's pair of these little tweezer guys. Do, do, do. You know what? Let me take my... Uh, take my... Zoom out just a little bit. Okay, let me just basically grab this bad boy and yank her right out. Yeah. Alright. And there's my little coil right here. I got all mangled. It's still very, very juicy. Let me just give this a quick wipe off. Okay. What I like to do here is now get my top cap of my magneto or any mechanical. I just put this guy right on here. Makes it easier to stand. Alright, so when using cotton um, as your wick, it is very. Um, it's even more frayable than silica is, and it's not as sturdy as silica is. You can see how it just wants to flop down. So, what I'm going to do is actually take my... You can torch this canthal uh, ribbon wire if you want. I do sometimes. I'm just lazy right now. I'm not going to. You can wrap it around the drill bit, which actually is what you're going to do if you're using cotton, because... It's hard to wrap it around cotton. I mean, I guess you could put a needle or a pin around it and then wrap around the pin. I find it just more perfect and easier. It just wrap straight around the drill bit. I'm trying to get this on camera. You're not going to be able to see it because it's so tiny, but I am wrapping a coil. I'm going to do, what am I going to do on this? Maybe one, two, we'll do three wraps with this and see. You know what? Let's go crazy. Let's do four. And I'll tell you one thing right now. This flat ribbon wire is a freaking great invention. So much easier to wrap around things because it's flat. And you know what? I got five wraps here, so let's take one out. I can't count. Boring, 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 but there we go. On a black drill bit, it's almost impossible to see, but I'll show you here. And on this camera, it's almost possible. But there's four perfectly wrapped coils of... It's a 4-3 wrap. 
on here. Yeah, see, like I said, it's almost possible to see this camera. I'm going to stay about it. We'll see how it turns out. I might never do this again on camera like this, but then from here, what I'm going to do is actually put it back on the drill bit. Just wanted to show you what it looked like to keep it um, together. And this is going to be the difficult part on camera. What I do, which you can't see, is I just basically wrap it once around that nut. Just wrapped one loop, one loop right around that nut, and basically holds it there. And then with the other one, I do the exact same thing. And let me loosen this post here. Yeah, it's sometimes it's a bitch. It's, sorry. This is why I like ones with the hole through the center post, so you just feed the wire through and then tighten it down. But let's here we go, we got that on there. We're just gonna give it a tighten. And as we tighten it's gonna actually pull my coil all sorts of ways and as in this case it knocked the wire right out apologize if you can't see what I'm doing let's try and get this done the right way so we can vape it that's the goal vaping vape 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 okay so I've now got my coil which is non-visible <laughs> Still wrapped around the drill bit. I feel that it's a little loose. So I'm just gonna tinkle with it a little bit. Tinkle, tinkle. Okay, and it should be wrapped around there. Yes, it is. Mm, sorry, guys. I edit some of this out. We'll see how it goes. Okay, and we do what they call the Scott K method, I think, just a wiggle, some tension, wire snaps right off. You know, they make this wiggling, some people make it look really simple, this is not as easy as it looks. Look how much wiggling I'm doing, look how much tension I got on here. Finally, broke. I don't know. It doesn't look like the perfectest coil, but I'll wrap it back around and just okay. We're gonna see how that works. We actually got the coil wrapped up, and we're gonna put it on my magneto real quick and just see how she fires. If she fires, doesn't explode on me. We'll see. See, can you see that? Wow. A little close to the post on one side. Not where I'd like to be, but I can move it later. See that? Perfect. Hidden like a champ. Okay. Like I said, you don't want to dry burn this at all. Don't want to dry burn cotton. You will just light up a ball of fire. Unless you want to see fireworks, so there you go. Now this part's going to be another hard part. Grim Green's done this in this video, so if my videos are kind of shitty, I apologize. I'm just trying something different. Um, basically, just fold over your uh, okay cotton there. And I got a piece of non-resistance wire. You could use fishing line, any kind of wire line or whatever. I would not use resistance wire because you'll basically conduct with the other resistant wire. You might mess things up. I basically put it in like that so it's looped and looped. I take this wire here, to make sure it's nice and together. And I'm basically going to pull the wire through 
recoil. Just like that. See how I'm pulling it through? Eventually, you'll get to a point where you get caught, but a point where you're just going to pull the wire gently. Kind of force it and just wiggle a little bit. Let me turn this TV down. I don't know what's going on. I had it on mute and it unmuted. So I'm just going to pull this through. Of course, I'm going to have trouble with this today. Usually it's a lot easier, folks. But you can space your claws out after this, but you can see it's starting to come through now. This is just an easy method of... Usually a lot easier, but there you go. Close through. I take my resistance wire out now. Oh, I'm sorry. Non-resistance wire that I'm using to pull it through. Unwrap it real quick. Boop. There you go. Cotton wick. 28 or .08 ribbon wire. I'm just going to give it a quick space with a little flathead here. Uh, make sure none of these coils are touching each other. They just going to be spaced out just a bit. And it's the nice thing about this is that drill bit I'm using, by the way, is uh, five five sixteenths or five thirty no five thirty seconds, I believe. It's uh, one you, it's the one you use to make a two two mil air hole um, for for wrapping the coil, and it just fits perfect with a loop of cotton. That's it. I got the coil spaced out. Everything seems just right. Again, going to be hard to see. Um, and what I do now is just cut my cotton down to size, or you can just really, what I like to do is just fold the shit over and just jam it all in here because it's going to get wet and just act as wicking material. But at that, just folded that stuff right down in there. And it's got this little cup, the Eichel Bell, which I love. And on the loop part here, I'll just cut the loop just a little bit. Grab loop in my cutters. Really need a better pair of cutters than nail clippers. This stuff's kind of actually harder to cut than. Actually, no, it is harder to cut than silica. Or I could just have bad cutters. One or the other. Okay. There we go. And again, just tuck that wire, that coil, uh, the cotton, sorry, right down in the channels. There you go, finished product, that's how I do mine. We'll pop it on here and put some juice on it and see how it fires. Go check the resistance of this also, which I probably will. I'll also run on my DNA 20 and see the final resistance is. And I almost made the biggest mistake, let me lock it. Lock her up. And I'm going to fill it up with juice first because you don't want to fire it any other way. Now I'm again using Moon Mountain, Va Moon Mountain Vapor. And just watch that cotton just suck all that juice in. Get it nice and saturated. And this is like building for beginners to be honest with you. I'm not an advanced vapor whatsoever. I can do this so... A lot of other people are going to be able to do this a lot better than I can. Okay, we got our coil saturated. Let's see now, let's see it fire. If it fires, we're going to fuck it up. And look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Alright, give me a second to clean this up. We'll take it up top, we'll vape it, we'll talk about it a little bit more, and we'll uh, be done with this. Alright, so we saw a little tutorial on how to build a proper coil. Um, sorry if it didn't come out as great as I wanted it to. Thought maybe this computer and this camera. I think now my weakest link is the camera. So now we're going to look at the place in that in the near future. Um, so, anyways, that is cotton with ribbon wire. Um, I'm just going to put a few more drops on the coil. I'm going to pop on my top cap. Make sure you line up the air hole that coil as best as you can. Oh yeah, I can see my coil nice and through there. And I'll set my top cap just a little bit off the ledge because of the way the air hole is on this. 
see how it vapes. <coughs> vapes well. Vapes purely well. I did like a champ. That ribbon wire just works good. A few more drops in there. I also have partially lower battery right now. It's dying on me. I have my AC on, so it's blowing all the vapor all which ways. But it's a hell of a vape. It's a very intense vape. Very simple to do. Um, this stuff here, like I was saying, sugar and cream. Michael's 199. This is my new wick. I'm using this in all my RDAs. I haven't tried it in my EVODs. We're building them with this yet. Yeah, I'm kind of skeptical about that. But if this will work for $1.99, I'll be good for years, years to come on rebuildables. And this is from Clouds of Vapor, uh, just 0 .08 uh, ribbon canthal wire, which I dropped. Or you could just use your standard 28 gauge round canthal wire, which I also use for anything I'm building low. I usually use my 28 and my 32s for my, you know, my kangers and my regular resistant mods. I'll take a few more toots and wrap this up. Great performance. This Magneto is kicking, and this I go well for seven bucks. Forty-seven bucks for that setup right here. Who said you need to vape expensive? Forty-seven bucks setup. Some two-dollar cotton for 120 yards. That's a just a screaming deal. Screaming, screaming deal. I hope this video um, to some of you was helpful. Maybe not be able to make out what I'm doing. Check out Grim Green. He's got some better tutorials on how to do stuff. Um, I always look at his stuff to kind of guide me in the right direction. So if that wasn't good enough for you, feel free to check out his videos. Um, yeah, just again, thank you all for watching. And uh, please subscribe if you'd like to. Just click the subscribe button below, comment, PM me anytime. If you got any questions, and uh, keep on making it.